moms, happy Mother's Day. We love and appreciate you so much. And our prayer is that you feel that, this strange, unusual Mother's Day. Thinking a lot about my mom, because it's Mother's Day, but also because of where I'm at. Friends, I sit in the Seven Dwarfs restaurant on Roosevelt Road, right across the street from our Wheaton campus. Do you know the place? This is sacred ground. I don't know if you were aware of that. But it was at precisely this spot that my father, 57 years ago, proposed marriage to my mom, and she accepted. You, you say to yourself, really? Seven Dwarfs? I don't see that as a real romantic place. Oh, it is. In fact, romance was in the air. This was not a pre-planned proposal for my dad. This was just spontaneous. They were having breakfast here as a couple college students, and my dad felt the love for this beautiful blonde, and he just said, how about we get married? And she said, I'm in. And the rest is history. I guess I owe my very existence to that transaction that took place at this spot. Love my parents. Long to honor them. In fact, that's what we're talking about. Today's message is called The Honoring of Parents, week four in this series. You, you may say to yourself, uh, the honoring of parents, that sounds familiar. Yes, it's one of the commandments, one of the ten. In fact, the sixth of the Ten Commandments is honor your father and your mother. So some of you say, well, yeah, honoring, isn't that the commandment really for kids? You know, kids, obey your parents. And it's very true that this is applicable to kids. But you should know that originally when the Sixth Commandment was uttered, when it came from God through Moses, it was given to adults. This is a command for adults. In fact, Jesus taught on the sixth commandment, to honor your father and your mother. He taught on it five times, and each time he was teaching adults. And so, adults, we need to learn how to honor our parents. And we're going to learn from Jonathan. This whole series is a study of this hero of ours named Jonathan. Jonathan had people skills that were amazing. And we're learning just how to follow his example. In this particular message, we're going to see that Jonathan honored his dad. We've already seen him relate to a co-worker. We've seen him relate to a friend. Now we're seeing him relate to his father, King Saul. And friends, this guy once again shows us how it's done. Our series is entitled, It's Not You, It's Me. I love the series title. It's a humble posture acknowledging that I've got issues. I've got relational issues deficiencies. And I want to learn how to do this people thing better. In this particular case, we're acknowledging that I have much to learn when it comes to honoring my parents. Now, I can imagine many of you say, hey, I, my parents are gone. I don't have parents anymore. And I just want to encourage you that there's great application for you in this study as well. Uh, Maybe God is going to bring somebody else to mind who needs to be honored by you. There's no shortage of people who need to be honored. In fact, in this particular crisis season that we're all living through, God's going to bring somebody to mind that you can apply this teaching to. We desperately need it. So are you ready? We're learning from Jonathan how to honor our parents. You know, I love coming back on my deck with the fire. It's just a great place to get away, to think, or to have a significant conversation. You know, if you really want to have a good talk and you need to get away from the rest of the people in the house, bring somebody back outside of the house and sit them down. You know, this is exactly what Jonathan needed to do with his dad, Saul. They needed to get out of the palace. The Bible tells us that they went into a field nearby because this talk was going to be really tough and really important. You may wonder, why, why did Jonathan need to have this tough talk with his dad? Let's find out, shall we? I'm turning to 1 Samuel 19, verse 1. You ready for this? Saul told his son Jonathan and all the attendants 
to kill David. Can you believe that? Saul's uh, jealousy has boiled to the point where he's assigning his best military operatives the task of becoming assassins to kill the national hero. Now, some of you are like, this is no surprise. We, last week, we learned that Saul wanted to kill David because he was jealous of David's growing popularity. It's true. In fact, I want to point out that this passage we're studying today actually chronologically happened before uh, the one we studied last week. I switched the order because I wanted to study this one on Mother's Day because it's all about honoring your parent. And so this is the very first time Saul's revealing how evil his heart is and that he wants to kill David. He's actually tried to kill David already personally and failed, but now he's assigning his best men to this diabolical task. Jonathan was stunned. Dad, I wanted to believe that you were noble and good, and I'm discovering here that you are corrupt to the core. You can imagine how disappointed Jonathan was. But he said, Dad, we need to talk. Well, the first thing he had to do actually was warn his his friend. He said in verse 2, Jonathan warned David, my father Saul is looking for a chance to kill you. Be on your guard tomorrow morning. Go into hiding and stay there. Then verse 3, I will go out and stand with my father in the field where you are, and I'll speak to him about you. Why does Jonathan want to have this talk with his dad in a field near where David's hiding? I'm speculating here, but I think I know why. And that is that this is the hardest talk of his life. And he needs his friend near him. He needs his friend aware that the conversation is happening now. Pray, pray. We know that feeling, don't we? Sometimes before you have that hard talk, you you call your friend and you say, Hey, I'm about to call the person I need to talk to. Pray for me. Well, that's what happens. Uh, it's right nearby. Or the plan is that it'll be right nearby. And in this verse that we've already read, verse 3, I find the first of the keys as to how to honor your parents. You really want to honor your parents? Here's number one. Support. Support them. You say, where, where was that in that verse? Well, let me show you. Going back to verse 3, it says, I will go out and stand with my father. That simple phrase, stand with my father, is very important. In fact, the word with, that's translated with, the original original language says, I will stand at the hand of, of the king. And that phrase, standing at the hand of the king, it always means being loyal to the king. It means I am with the king. In fact, in other passages of the Bible, we find that later with King David, there are those attendants who are at his hand. It means they're loyal, devoted to him. With King Artaxerxes of Persia, also his attendants were at his hand. They were loyal to him. And so Jonathan is saying, listen, I'm going to confront my father, but I want him to know that I'm by his side, that I support him, that I'm loyal that I'm in this with him. Friends, that's so important. Our our, our parents need to know we're still with them, especially if they're aging, you know, as they get to retirement age and they're not contributing maybe as much as they once did or their life isn't as complex or interesting. They can fear, fear that we don't care, that we're too busy for them. And we need to step in and tell them that is not true. I am by your side. We're in this together, especially in this quarantine, this pandemic. You know, here we're having to distance and isolate. We need to use whatever means are available, whether that be texting, whether that be phone calls. But we need to convey honor by saying, I support you. We're in this together. I'm by your side. Stand by me. I'll stand by you. You want to honor your parents? Show them, you support them. So the first way to show honor to your parents is support. The second way here is to respect. Let me read to you the very first words David said to his dad in this difficult conversation. This is 1 Samuel 19, 4. 
Jonathan said to Saul, let not the king do wrong to his servant David. All right, he's, he's challenging him. He's like, dad, don't do it. This plan to kill David is ridiculous. Let not the king do wrong. First of all, I want to point out that Jonathan's showing respect. Uh, when he refers to his dad, he does so by his title, the king, let not the king. You know, in this moment, he's so upset. He, he could have said, what the heck are you thinking, you dirtbag? None of that. It is, let not the king do wrong. Even in this moment, he is desiring to show respect. Now, an important little detail, in this moment, he doesn't feel respect for his dad. He's embarrassed, ashamed, humiliated. He can't believe that his own father would stoop to a plan that's this evil. He, he doesn't feel respect, but he's showing respect. That may be very helpful to you. Uh, some grow up in families where they have they, the feeling of respect for their parents. Their parents have lived lives of excellence that just draw out this admiration. Others are like, yeah, you know, my mom and dad, they, they didn't live a very godly life. They're not living a very godly life. I, I don't feel a lot of respect. You know, that, that may be the case, but you can show respect. Showing respect is part of what it means to honor your parents. Here's an interesting verse out of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 22. It says, give respect to your father and mother, for without them, you wouldn't even be here. <laughs> That's a good reminder, isn't it? That they brought us life. And so we can go back to that very basic principle that, hey, listen, they brought me life. That They nurtured me. They provided for me. Maybe they didn't do it great. They're human. I see their frailty, but I'm going to show them respect because they're children of God and because they're my parents. And so how can we show respect? You know, as our parents get older in the retirement age, sometimes they can struggle, though they don't verbalize it, but struggle with a sense of, do I still matter? You know, I'm not producing. My life's not as dramatic as it once was. By showing them respect, we're conveying to them, you, mom and dad, are a VIP. The way I speak to you, the way I speak about you, what I say to you will convey that I have the utmost respect for you. You are very important to me. So how can you show respect to your parents? You know, over here, I have a couple bronze statues of third grade children, a boy and girl holding hands. This is Bill Scherer, and this is Jane Latshaw. They uh, grew up in Naperville, met each other, had crushes on each other back in the third grade, started dating in high school, got married, and were married for 60 years. Isn't that beautiful? It's one of the great love stories of Naperville. Well, their son, John, had so much respect for his parents. He just thought they were role models and he just adored them and he wanted to express his respect in a tangible way. Well, John decided to pay $25,000 to have these bronze statues of his parents uh, carved, made, and installed here in Naperville. So uh, how about you, huh? Ever made bronze statues of your folks? Oh, you're still in process of that, huh? Well, you know, we don't have to make bronze statues of them, do we? We don't have to drop $25,000, maybe 25 bucks for some flowers would be good. But the point is, how do we show our parents that they are VIPs to us and to God? How do we convey how absolutely significant they are in our eyes. God will guide us and we will find ways to show them respect.
So, so this is a barber shop. Long ago, it was a place that used to cut your hair. <laughs> Friends, I got my second quarantine haircut this week. What do you think? Believe it or not, my daughter, my eldest daughter, Jora, cut my hair. She came to me a while back and she said, Dad, you're looking pretty shaggy. Can I try cutting your hair for you? She had never done this before in her life. But when you're desperate, you'll try crazy things. And she's done surprisingly well, very grateful for her. And it was very humbling to sit there and be served by my daughter, to let her do for me what I desperately needed but couldn't provide for myself. Friends, that's so biblical. It's such a way God intended for children to serve the parents, to honor the parents by providing for their physical needs. Do you know scripture says that parents should be provided for by their kids. It's really part of the plan. This is this great reversal. You know, it starts off with parents providing for kids, but as time passes, it goes the other way. Let me read verse four and how uh, Jonathan did this for his dad. These are the words that Jonathan says next. He says, what David has done has benefited you greatly. Dad, David is a huge benefit to you. Dad, don't kill him. You, you need him. How has David benefited Saul? Well, a couple of ways. Uh, Jonathan was probably thinking about his harp playing. David's music ministry had an enormous effect on King Saul. Saul struggled with depression, uh, demonic oppression, this mental illness maybe. And yet the beautiful music of David had a soothing effect and brought about a joy that no one else could. Jonathan was thinking about his dad's mental well-being and said, you need David. He also was thinking not only of David's heart, but David's sword. David was the greatest military commander in Saul's army. David had brought about the victory against Goliath and many other battles. And so Jonathan is like, Dad, I'm thinking about what you need. And I want to provide David because he's the guy who can meet this need. Uh, Jesus, when he looked at his mother, he provided for her needs. That was his last earthly task. In fact, he was hanging on the cross. When he looked to his buddy John, he said, John, would you take care of my mom? And John did take Mary into his house and cared for her physical needs. Jesus provided what was necessary for his mom. Friends, we need to provide what's necessary as best we're able to provide for our parents. It's one of the ways we honor them. I saw my mom provide for her mom, my grandma, in beautiful, inspiring fashion. My grandmother was an old, feeble widow for her last 10 years until she died at 98. And I saw my mom serve her every day. That, for that decade, that was my mom's number one life objective, to provide for the needs of her mother. Uh, when you see a daughter serve a mom, it's one of the most beautiful things. My mom's out of luck. She had three boys. <laughs> well, we're going to try. We will do our very best to provide for our mom like she provided for hers. Friends, you want to honor your parents, provide for them. So we're wanting to honor our parents, and we've learned we can do that through support, respect, provide, and now guide. We can guide them to God. Do you realize the most important thing we can do with our folks is help them get right with God? That's the number one concern on Jonathan's heart concerning his dad is, is my dad right with the Lord? And we see that guidance in verse 5. Here's what Jonathan says to his dad. Dad, David killed the Philistine and the Lord won a great victory for all Israel. Why then would you sin by killing David? 
dude, do you understand his rationale here? He's saying, Dad, David killed Goliath, but it was really God at work through him, bringing the victory. Uh, Dad, David is God's agent. God is David's strength. Dad, David and God are on the same team. If you kill him, you're opposing God. You're sinning against God. You're disobeying God. Dad, I'm concerned about you and God. Friends, the greatest thing we can do is make sure our parents are right with the Lord. Now, I know some of you are like, Jeff, it is so hard to talk with my parents about spiritual matters. I can talk with them about anything, but bringing up Jesus is just so difficult. I hear you, but friends, you've got to do it. Before it's too late, there is nothing more important. And you may ask, well, how? How would I do it? You know, what do I say? I'm no preacher, no theologian. You know, we can make it real simple. I love this approach. Problem, solution. There's a problem, it's sin. And there's a solution, it's Jesus. Maybe this will help. You see on the wall there, we have an AED. Do you know what that is? That stands for Automated External Defibrillator. It's real simple. There, there's a problem. It's a heart attack. There's a solution. It's an AED. Those things are amazing. That machine can bring somebody back from the brink of death. They have a heart attack. They're laying there. Their, their heart is stopped. You open up that machine and it'll guide you. It's actually got a voice guidance system. It'll tell you, place these electrodes, these pads on the victim's chest and then push that button and bam, their heart, which had stopped, restarts. Isn't that awesome? Friends, that's like Jesus. We got a sin problem. Our, our heart is broken. And only Jesus Christ, through what he's done on the cross, can bring someone back to life spiritually, eternally. So you ask your folks, how, how are you doing with the Lord? And they say, well, I hope, I think I'm doing okay. I mean, I'm not perfect. You know that, kid. You're my kid. You know that better than anybody. I'm not perfect. And they say, but I'm trying. And you can explain, Mom, Dad, it's not about trying. Trying is you trying to resolve the problem. And the Bible says that only Jesus can resolve the sin problem. And so you ask them, have you asked Jesus for help? Have you cried out to him and said, Jesus, I need you to be my savior, my forgiver. Mom or dad, ask him to solve the problem. You know, when it comes to the AAD, you can do everything. You can put on the pads and push the button for another person. When it comes to salvation, you can't push the button for your parents. You, you can put on the pads. That is, you can set them up. You can help them understand that they've got a sin problem and that Jesus is the solution. But in the end, they've got to say yes and push the button. You can pray like crazy, and I join you in that prayer. May they come to a place where they realize their need for Jesus Christ. They cry out to him and say, help! I need you. Friends, the greatest thing you can do for your parents, the best way to honor them, is to guide them to God. Man, did Jonathan do great at honoring his dad or what? And it had great effect. Let me show you. This is verse 6. Saul listened to Jonathan and took this oath. As surely as the Lord lives, David will not be put to death. Look at the impact that honor had on this dad. He was going off in a crazy plan to kill David, and he saw the folly of his ways, and he changed his mind. Not only did he articulate his heart change, we see the actual impact in verse 7 when it says, Jonathan brought David to Saul. And David was with Saul as before. That's a reference to his music ministry, bringing him joy again. And then it continues, once more war broke out and David went out and fought the Philistines. David also blessed Saul with his military leadership once again. Jonathan has, has honored well and the impact in Saul's life is profound. Friends, let's just do a review of how you and I can honor our parents. Support. 
Look them in the eye and say, hey, we're in this together. I'm standing by you. Respect. Again, you don't have to feel respect, but you do need to show it, that you are very important to God and therefore to me. Provide. To do our very best to provide for the physical needs in the lives of our parents. And guide. Guide them to the Lord the very best we can. Mothers, we love you, and we say to you, Happy Mother's Day. May this day be a blessing and a joy in your life. We actually have a special song for you, moms. This song comes right out of this high priestly blessing found in the Old Testament, where the cry is, bless you and keep you. And, and we got you moms in mind. May you be blessed in your life and in your ministry to the generations to come. Moms, happy Mother's Day. <laughs>